support, psychological health. They don't have the health insurance that covers it. And if they do have the health insurance that covers it, they may have five sessions or eight sessions, or it's very limited. I think that's really sad in light of still not claiming that mental health care is paramount in our whole health issue. So um, I was thinking also as a mental health specialist that when I look at the health care system, uh, and as I experience it personally, it seems very sick to me. Some of you saw Michael Moore's uh, documentary, Sicko. It seems very sick to me. And my job as a mental health specialist is to help people identify what is not working, what is unhealthy, what is not benefiting them, and to engage in a program that will help them be healthier. And I thought, hmm, that's a good model for thinking about this so-called health insurance or health care model that we have that's based on health insurance companies. And I got to thinking, I heard recently of one physician say that the health insurance health care model is a defective model. I thought that was putting it rather, rather mildly. But so I, here were some of the things that came to my mind about the current health insurance health care system. It's not efficient. It is not affordable for millions of Americans. It can be taken away at a whim or denied because you have been sick at some point in your life. It wastes $400 million annually for administrative costs. It charges you $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 deductibles, and then you get to pay your co-pays on top of that. Uh, it tells you which doctors you can see and which you can't. It tells you which medications you can take and which you can't. And if you think about the criticisms we've heard about single, single payer system, you won't be able to choose your doctors. You won't be able to choose your hospitals. And yet they're touting that we can do that now. It's erroneous. We can't do that now. And so, Obviously, the other thing is that your health, can, your health insurance can be terminated at any time. And we've heard hundreds of stories about that. And if that happens and you're stuck with the bills, you're going to have to file for bankruptcy just like a lot of people have had to. I think now they're saying that 50% of bankruptcies in this country are medically induced bankruptcies. That should not be happening in this country. It should not be happening. Now, uh, my husband and I have both had pre-existing, how many of you have had pre-existing illnesses? Anybody? <laughs> okay. You've ever been sick in your life, you've had a pre-existing illness. We've both had pre-existing illnesses, and because I'm self-employed, we pay $900 a month for our health insurance premiums for our family, with $5,000 deductibles for each person in our family. Oh. Last year, and this is largely because of our pre-existing issues, last year we paid 23% of our adjusted gross income for out-of-pocket health insurance costs and, and medical costs. And we were relatively healthy. We've been healthy for a long time. That's a problem, isn't it? And mm -hmm. our story is one of millions, and there are millions worse than us. So this is, this is unjust. So I think that most of us would agree that this so-called healthcare system, which really uh, the World Health Organization ranks as 37th in the world in terms of its efficiency and appropriate, uh, providing appropriate medical care, needs to be reformed. And of course now everybody's jumping on the reform bandwagon, aren't they? You're hearing this everywhere. And interestingly, it worries me a little bit when health insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies start talking about our moral right to health care. Does it worry you a little bit? <laughs> Especially since we know that in the last, I think, three months, the, the pharmaceutical companies have spent $40 million in lobbying Congress, and I don't even know how much the insurance companies have spent. Does anybody know? I think it's untold millions have been spent in lobbying. And therefore, they're the ones driving the reform, aren't they? They're the ones who have the voice, who are determining what this, quote, new reform is going to look like. So, and one of those things that we're hearing is that uh, the so-called reform is going to include a mandate for everybody to buy health insurance. Wow, now who benefits from that? The 45 million or so Americans who don't have health insurance now are going to be required to buy it. You're going, hmm, does that sound like reform to, to anybody? Yeah. Well, Drastic. pardon me? Drastic. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, you know what I was thinking of, and I know everyone has thought of this connection. 
here we are uh, with this so-called reform moving through Congress. I thought about our financial institutions um, and how we've experienced them in the last year or two and how they have reassured us, oh yes, they're solid, they're sound, they're taking care of our interests. And here we go. Now enter the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies with the moral obligation to help us out. So here's what I'm thinking in terms of my own commitment to what I need to do. I think the health and the health care of our nation depends on every one of us waking up and waking up and realizing we cannot depend on corporate America to take care of us, can we? I mean, that has been shown over and over, especially lately. So we've got to now get, wake up, get out in the streets, make our voices heard, and if we look back at all the movements in America, we can see what happened. The change really needed to happen. People had to get out there, didn't they? They couldn't just be asleep at the wheel. We've got to start requiring our Congress, our elected officials, to represent us and not the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies. And that's only going to happen, unfortunately, right, when we get out in numbers. And so far, I mean, this is great. We need to multiply this by thousands more, right, in the streets. And so I think I just echo what everyone else has said. The only real health care reform is the reform that expands on what's already working, which is Medicare, improving it, tweaking it, yes, managing it better, but providing care for every single American, being literally seeing it as a moral obligation and a moral right for everybody to have the same kind of care. And that's what Health Care for All Colorado advocates. We're glad you're here, and please join us in this effort. Thank you.